Hello and welcome to this Splits Report uh, tutorial. Today we're going to be covering uh, part two, which is the support and data migration functions that are all uh, within the Blitz Report toolkit. Uh, part one was uh, about the database uh, analy analytics and uh, concurrent uh, processes, etc., patches and so on. Um, the overview of the toolkit is uh, in a previous session. This was run at the uh, Scotland uh, uh, Oracle user group. Uh, and so I'm just going to run, run you through the main components of the support and data migration toolkit. Um, so if we start by um, going to system administration, um, and I'll just show you a couple of things that uh, are available here. Um, one of the things that uh, was present or prevalent in my uh, implementation and support work was uh, we needed to be able to generate quick downloads and uh, for BR100 setups and so on. Um, and, and it wasn't that, that straightforward to do with SQL. So we've built a whole set of uh, reports here that will allow you to down, download pretty much any object uh, and then create it into your BR100. Or indeed, if you're doing an upgrade, uh, then you'll be able to migrate pretty much any object. And, and I'll show you a couple of the reports. So Blitz, Blitz report is on the main menu, of course. Uh, that's something that you, you do during the installation process. Uh, and then you can decide whether you want to add Blitz report within uh, any of the particular e EBS forms. Uh, so, for example, uh, this is an old favorite for support when things start to go wrong. Um, it's always good to be able to see who's changed uh, your profile. So this uh, report, again, one of the toolkit reports has been added to the profile form. Um, and as you can see, it uses all the standard EBS uh, commands. Um, so we just click into the setup before we go ahead and run it. Um, across here, we've got uh, our parameters, which uh, either you can define from scratch or you can just double click and pick an existing uh, parameter. So for example, uh, you see there are already a number of existing uh, seeded parameters. So it makes uh, creating reports very straightforward. You can assign at any level as well. Um, this one hasn't hasn't been assigned, uh, but it's quite easy to, to give it to particular users. Um, and again, follows the, the same sort of standards that Oracle follow. In fact, we added a couple of extra layers. So this is in the setup and support toolkit. I'm just going to save that. Um, as you go through, uh, if you were to run any of these reports you see here we've got the database uh, there's a few metrics that have been added um, here's the complete list of the setup and support but obviously you can add uh, and subtract based on what you see relevant uh, but let's go ahead and run this uh, particular report you see also here we've got version control so uh, we track all the different variations of the script so this one you know you could you could migrate between environments as well um, so you just you could just you know keep the the trail um of what's what's been happening here um so i'll go ahead and close that and if you migrate between environments you can import export uh, um, and actually it creates a, a file that allows you to import it uh, in a very straightforward way so you can move between environments as well um you can bring in of course your, your favorite um uh, type of reports like BI Publisher, for example. Uh, some of you may have Discover still. Uh, you'd be able to bring those in and it would just bring them all in with the parameters uh, as well. But um, let's just go ahead and run this uh, particular report. Um, I'm interested at site level and I'm interested in changes that happen since a certain date. You could put any of the different applications in here uh, and then go ahead and run it. So let's just run it and I'll show you as it goes through, um, it, it creates an output here. It goes through the concurrent uh, queue as you would expect uh, and then delivers a, a fully formatted Excel file, recognizing all the date, uh, date character number type uh, formatting. Uh, and then across here, we've got uh, where we do translation. We do this on quite a few reports. Uh, you see here one and two is uh, translated to no and yes. Uh, you know, USD is US dollar and so on. Uh, so we, we work out all those translations as well. So it's perfectly ready for you to export into to your BR100 or your uh, DS30. And you can also schedule this on a, on a daily basis. So um, I said I've run this already. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you how that process would work. Um, you see here we've, we've got our report here, so you just simply copy it. Uh, so we could copy a single request 
and then we've, we've got the ability to use our standard scheduling functions and then go ahead and schedule this so then you would track um, and you could increment on date use all the standard um, all the standard functions and uh, you can have this running at a certain time so from a support perspective you you be able to keep an eye on what's changing yeah, so it uses the same and it also um, uses uh, all the delivery options in fact we've enhanced some of those delivery options uh, to give you uh, a lot more uh, data uh, manipulation and so on and emails and all those good things so let's just close that um, and move on to our next uh, report I'm going to show you so uh, again within um, so we just go across here and if we go into the age-old problem with concurrent requests um, very hard to analyze unless you've got a, a relatively good overview and this is uh, again another blitz report that we've created to monitor those requests that are running long running um, you know perhaps been waiting too long um, or you know running for longer than X number of minutes and then we've got the Delta option down the bottom so if you're running this every couple of hours you just want to see the the changes that have occurred in the last uh, you know the last since the last run uh, then it will just give you a basically the alert with just those delta changes uh, so let's run this one as well um, and again uh, we translate those difficult to read uh, concurrent um, uh, parameters if you like so you, instead of having ones and noughts and all the good um, things you see here across here the parameter text um, so uh, if you look across here for example we've got a translation so let's just find one that's uh, tricky to read on a normal basis um, you see here there's quite a few uh, there's a good one uh, example so if we just open up that you see the difference here so we've got all our different uh, translations here um, so you know if you're picking up on uh, difficult to read parameters you see we're getting a, a much more detailed output here uh, translated between the two so similarly to to the profiles we, we're just uh, translating and across on the right hand side um, you've got all of the different short names that you need uh, you know to go off and debug um, you know uh, what, what the process was what the execution method was how long it ran for them how long did you wait and similarly, you can apply these on uh, any of the interface tables. Uh, so, for example, uh, one of the ones in inventory that we often have to do as we get towards the period end is we've got um, to close down you know, our period. If we go ahead and close a period, um, let me just pick an organization, then um, it will obviously ask you, uh, to you know once you start changing the, the status what are all the pending transactions well you could have this scheduled on a on a again on an hourly basis um, and you know we do do that again with uh, a scheduled request which you can launch from here and then you know if I just take out these parameters this is a fairly old database here but if I was to look at uh, what's been going on across all of the periods and what needs to be closed out, whether it's in works ordering, uh, trip stops, order management, um, purchase receiving and so on. Uh, these are then uh, clearly sent to, to the person responsible for those. And then they get to, to work on them in a more reactive, uh, sorry, rather than running afterwards, it's better to be uh, reactive to the issues and, and actually fix them as they come along. Um, so you see here we've got the ability to then to just filter those and of course you can add more detail in there about the error message uh, and so on as you see fit um, so that that's uh, something simple to do within uh, here you see basically we take a, an oracle query from this document uh, and then just union all the queries together but of course you could put in as uh, as many uh, queries as there as you need um, and then add the additional error text uh, logic as required but just as an example so then if we go across into some of the other modules uh, for example uh, let's have a look at order management so if you're thinking about uh, doing some setup uh, and documentation uh, you would just simply come across here and run your BL100 order type report and it would then give you um, a full uh, setup of the order types the line types the workflows so you, it's very easy to document your um, setup and then in, incorporate within your BR100 so you see here we're going across we've got operating unit transaction type whether it's mixed or line or order and so on and then across here we've got the assigned uh, workflows and account details that you would expect 
And, you know, again, you can extend these reports based on your requirements. Very straightforward thing to do. These are seeded uh, and also available on the Enginatics uh, homepage. So if you just have a look at the library, you'll see some of these available. Um, and then if we move across uh, again, go back to system administrator. Uh, one of the things we get regularly asked to do is auditing uh, data on, on sensitive master data tables. So um, I was implementing uh, audit tracking and one of the ways obviously you add the columns that you need um, and in this particular case I did a, an audit uh, set up on uh, the bank uh, data attached to the site of a vendor. Um, and then as you bring in those um, column so if you were to do this in the standard way which i'm just showing you now um it's quite difficult to read because it puts it into um you know a, a not very nicely formatted uh text and i'll just show you what, what i mean um let me go ahead and close that um if we look at the request it generates from the standard audit again quite difficult to schedule as well so that would be a standard you know this account was this value changed by uh, and then you'd have to decipher this and try and get it into Excel format. And, uh, but far better uh, way to do it would be to use one of our reports. Um, and I'll just show you how to do that. Um, so if we go across here, uh, you see we've got a, a ability to do a, a site bank account changes. But we've made more generic ones. So you can do it on any table as well. So if we were to look in here, uh, setup and support. And then if I go down to toolkit, uh, vertical report here you then just pick your table in the similar way that we were uh, just doing just then so bank accounts and then it will say okay well what columns do you want to audit and we can go ahead and select uh, bank account name you can multi-select as well within blitz report so it's it's very good at um, you know it's been written by uh, people who understand EBS uh, and it allows you to do things that you really need to do um, so here we can just say okay I want to audit back to March um, because I know when changes were done um, and then you can run that uh, in a similar way you can also make metrics very easily with this kind of functionality and I'll, I'll show you how to do that in a minute so you see here we get a lovely uh, flat file with the um, the audit column what the old value was what the new value is uh, and then you know what the session ID was that did that uh, and, and what was the user so that can be applied to any object you want to track so uh, for example uh, i've got another one that i, did, I made recently um, on order lines so we just um, have a look at what we can select there and then we were doing a comparison on the promise date um, uh, against the scheduled ship date uh, versus the scheduling action um, you see here it's, it's very straightforward then to build a metric based on these um, and and Again, I could take the date from uh, either today or uh, let's just do uh, what's the date? Say 15th of June. Uh, just select that and run it. I did some changes earlier on um, on the order lines table. I rescheduled a particular order. And you see here, I've changed uh, the schedule date from the 29th of April to the 15th of June. So it's quite straightforward to then do some comparisons on. Uh, and build a metric on how your ATP data is shifting around. Uh, so I just thought I'd, I'd show you that one um, before we go across into order management. Um, and, and again, it's pretty much uh, can be added to any form uh, wherever you want to to add the Blitz report. It's, it's fully integratable uh, using a very small uh, personalization to select the report or reports you'd like to see. Um, I'm just going to see if I get the right uh, responsibility here and if I now change to order organizer and um, you see here this is quite a, a problem when you go to export mass data you, you'll find that uh, you're kept waiting so if I was to do this export now it would take somewhere in the round of region of 12 minutes but if I was to run it from uh, blitz report we can uh, quickly download the whole of the data and have it formatted into Excel within seconds rather than minutes. So here we go, selecting all the data uh, for orders, headers and lines. Again, you could use this as a migration process uh, or, or you could just simply uh, provide it to the operational people who are working in uh, order entry whereby they need to, to have mass volume of data without having to go into big data warehouses uh, which are out of date and so on. Um, so 
they are some of the functions there and obviously on each of the tables so if we just run blitz report um, for example if we now select our toolkit uh, we can go and have a look at some of the other reports that are available you see here we've got um, invoice errors for you know all the standard interface checks so here's one for auto invoice uh, where we, we just simply go by age and then we check what, what the errors are and you, you could of course schedule this and have it running on a, a daily repeat basis um, so as you can see here we've got a, a clear understanding of what errors we've got to process and could have those scheduled um, so just back to the, the toolkit I'll just show you some more things in here um, within this bucket we've also got uh, all the F&D uh, areas so you can look at your value sets your, your key flex fields all the values in those can be sent out and documented uh, directly into the blitz report and all of the uh, the areas you would expect uh, and of course you can add on top of these um, anything you would like to do in terms of workflow status summary uh, notifications etc etc so basically any table you need to monitor on a regular basis uh, this would be the place to do it um, so I said if you, if you want to find out more uh, this is just a very brief introduction into the blitz report uh, I will be running uh, other sessions on some of these other reports that are available uh, for example the enterprise command center dashboards uh, quite quite a headache to manage um, so I'll be doing some some work on that and showing you how we managed to overcome some of the limitations of that dashboard uh, and in the operational we'll be covering some of the end-to-end -end reporting across uh, all the different core processes such as record to report order to cash and purchase to pay and that's it for now any questions feel free to um, update or, or let me know in the um, chat window and we'll take it from there